the University of British Columbia, one of Canada's largest research universities with 10,000 research projects on any given day. 10,000 questions to be answered, 10,000 problems to be solved. UBC is a place of mind where world-class researchers are solving society's most pressing problems and answering critical questions about our world. In materials physics, a trio of very focused men chase down the mystery of superconductivity. So we're hoping to find out what the real origin of the, of the superconductivity is. We think it has something to do with magnetism. At the core of this research are superconducting crystals. We're very much in the business of trying to get the very best crystals. Raisheng Liang uh, undoubtedly makes the best yttrium barium copper oxide superconducting materials in the world. While studying these crystals in the 90s, Doug Bond discovered a phenomenon called D-wave symmetry, which took high temperature superconductivity to a new level. This is a family of materials that is arguably the most spectacular example of a, a breakdown of our conventional understanding of all solids. Max Sinatter is chasing down a better understanding of the brain at UBC's Brain Research Centre. In this area, uh, we have people working on uh, dementia. Uh, in this uh, very next one, we've got people working on stroke. Uh, here we have people working on brain development and plasticity. Uh, we are in a golden age of neuroscience. You know, the revolution in imaging, the revolution in molecular biology, being at a great place like UBC where you can have arguments with protein engineers uh, and another argument with a cognitive neuroscience uh, uh, star, uh, you know, uh, later on in the day. Having all that uh, around you basically makes it possible to do these kinds of things, do these tremendously interdisciplinary projects. Behind many strong interdisciplinary teams, are mathematicians. UBC is a hotbed of probability research. It's the mathematics of randomness. You imagine, um, for example, something like did the streets in a city. The random walker comes to a junction and all four um, options are, are open. Every time he meets a new intersection, he, he makes another random decision. My research has been on the problem, which is supposing you block off some of the streets, Mathematicians each have their own way of focusing. Uh, the trick is uh, uh, to give up on just uh, scribbling on a piece of paper and uh, walk around because you can't think of a problem in a complicated way when you're walking. In mathematics, when you encounter a problem, you tend to uh, fail a lot. And uh, it's important not to be put off. It helps to be moving. I like to hike. Hi, hey, David. In the course of her research, pharmacologist Helen Burt hikes a lot too. My lab is working with nine outside groups. Burt's research focuses on how to get drugs to the right place in the body. I'm learning stuff every day because I'm meeting engineers and chemists and material scientists and surgeons and physicians and they teach me about their problems that they need solved, and we look for ways to solve those problems. Daniel Pauly's research problem has no easy solution. The collapse of the world's fisheries is one of the most daunting problems of our time. Systematic overfishing is happening throughout the world. That is the case. Pauly was the first to recognize that the total catch of the world's fisheries is shrinking. In Canada, the, the gap between the understanding that there's a deep problem with fisheries and, 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 and what is being done is glaring. It's evident that what is concluded by, at the level of universities and what is concluded at the level of DFO about the management of the resources, state they are in and stuff, is very different. And, and this difference is not decreasing, it's increasing. And that is a big, monstrous problem. Brett Finley's monstrous challenge is caused by the tiniest of organisms, the viruses and bacteria that infect us. What I'd like to do in life is actually say I cured diseases and they're no longer and I can go work on something else. Finley's lab has a $10 million grant from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation 
to develop a vaccine for Africa that will boost the body's own immune system. And one of those grand challenges was to come up with drugs that would not increase antibiotic resistance that actually work in treating infections. And using that money, we've now put together a worldwide team and ways of enhancing our innate responses then to treat infections in developing countries. Saving humanity from germs is one thing. Saving humanity from itself is quite another. This is the task ecologist William Rees has taken upon himself. Canadians use three to four times their fair share of the world's ecological output. His famous ecological footprint model has changed how we view our role on this planet. We've arrived at this point in our history having about five generations of people thinking that growth in the economy, growth in population, is the norm when in fact it's the single most anomalous or abnormal period in the entire history of human existence. There's no substitute for using less. And all of the technological innovation and, and alternative energies and so on and so forth actually increase our footprint in many cases. While Rees worries about where we are going, evolutionary biologists are learning more about where we have come from. I'm trying to understand what features of the environment are necessary in order for a single population that's randomly mating to split into two. Much of what Dolph Schluter is discovering about evolution comes from this tiny fish. And the sticklebacks, the same two species have risen again and again, and uh, this is a, an enormous advantage for studying how it originated because we can see what's common to all of the examples that we have. UBC has diversified as well. There's a new Okanagan campus in Kelowna, and it's developing expertise in optimization mathematics under the leadership of Heinz Bauschke. If you take two numbers, it's easy to add them. If I give you three plus seven, you, you figure out the sum is 10. But what happens if I give you 10 and ask you, how did 10 arise as a sum of two integers? And there's lots of solutions to that. If you really love this stuff, putting in the work is actually not work, it's fun. So uh, for me, I have the best job in the world. Uh, I work a lot if you just count hours, but it doesn't feel like work to me. It's really, really fun. Back on the Vancouver campus, psychologist Janet Worker is loving her job. It's enormously fun to work with babies. It's great. Parents come into the lab. We get to show them how their babies are even more tuned into the world around them than they thought. Recently, Worker has focused on how babies in bilingual families learn two languages at once. Across the world, most estimates um, argue that more babies grow up in bilingual or multilingual homes than grow up monolingual. What do you think of that? Yeah. I get to do research on one of the most fascinating topics in the world. How is it that we acquire language? Medical geneticist Michael Hayden's language of interest is written in the amino acids of DNA. To our total delight, we found that by changing a single amino acid out of 3,144, we could totally prevent the onset of Huntington disease in a mouse. And this has given us an incredible target for developing therapies for humans. Hayden's lab is also studying the genes that play a role in diabetes and in adverse hospital drug effects. The importance of all our work is that we want to be leaders in research, but we also want to be leaders in hope and compassion. Natalie Stranadka's research offers hope to hospitals plagued by drug-resistant superbugs. So there's specific um, molecules in the superbug that we're trying to target to really understand their structure and biochemistry so that we can use that information to design compounds that block them. By making crystals of the bacteria's proteins, she can capture a three-dimensional image with x-rays. We've determined the first three-dimensional structure of a protein that is critical for cross-linking the sugar part of the cell wall that protects the bacteria within its human host. It's an essential protein. If we knock it out, the bacteria is dead. So we're very excited about this finding. The findings of chemists David Dolphin and Julia Levy have benefited hundreds of thousands of people worldwide. We started our research on Visudine oh, more than 20 years ago. Visudine is a light-activated drug that treats common eye diseases like macular degeneration. And when those first few patients were treated and everything that we'd anticipated came true, that was incredible. Visudine has now been uh, approved in 72 countries around the world. 
It's treated close to a million patients, preventing them from going blind. Physicist George Sawatsky's basic research is still a long way from creating a product, but it has enormous potential for yielding incredible new materials. Some time ago, we came uh, up with the idea that perhaps if you take two materials, the interface between those two could develop completely new and different properties from either of the two materials. And those properties could be extremely exciting. Sawatsky's experiments may lead to brand new superconducting materials. And what you want to do is develop techniques to look exactly at those quantum states and whether or not they're occupied by electrons uh, and how these electrons then behave. The behavior of a famous novelist has been the subject of Cheryl Grace's lifelong research. UBC has the world's main Malcolm Lowry archive. This folder has one of the, uh, the real treasures of the Malcolm Lowry collection. It's an actual document that would end up in Under the Volcano, a menu from Mexico. At the bottom in this corner here is uh, the lines from a, what it will become a fictional letter, and it ends up some hellish tales of this poor soul who once fled north and fleeing north was coming up to Vancouver from Mexico. Cheryl Grace's work on Malcolm Lowry is, like all research, a labor of fascination, of curiosity, and of meaning. Every researcher, whether chasing after quantum gravity, or ocean viruses, or forensic evidence, or the psyche of novelists, is searching for solutions to society's problems and for answers to the fundamental questions of our world. Their discoveries are helping us to live richer, healthier, more fulfilling lives. And those discoveries begin here, in this place of mind, the University of British Columbia. <laughs>